God bless you today, and we'll be reading Romans chapter 6. As always, we pray in the name of Jesus that he will bless us with the revelation of this word, and he will hide it in our hearts. For we live in a world that is evil, the world filled with sin. We are surrounded by sin, but we can be of good cheer because Jesus said, be of good cheer. Because you are in me, I am in you, and he has overcome the world, the flesh and the devil and death. So we are to be of good cheer, even though the whole world is in sin, doing such evil things, blaspheming against God Almighty. We can be of good cheer knowing that in Jesus we have the victory. Let us start with chapter 6, Romans. Let us begin. What shall we say then? This is meant to direct attention to Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Just because grace is greater than sin doesn't mean that the believer has a license to sin. God forbid prevents Paul's answer to the question. Away with the thought. Let not such a thing occur. How shall we, who are dead to sin, dead to the sin nature, live any longer therein? This portrays what the believer is now in Christ. Know you not that so many of us were as baptized into Jesus Christ? Plainly says that this baptism is into Christ and not water. We're baptized into his death. When Christ died on the cross, in the mind of God, we died with him. In other words, he became our substitute, and our identification with him in his death gives us all the benefits for which he died. The idea is that he did it for all of us. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Not only did we die with him, but we were buried with him as well which means that all of the sin and transgression of the past were buried. When they put them in the tomb, they put all of our sins into that tomb as well. What, what's, what, what words we're reading here? So, in the mind of God, we died with Christ on the cross. We rose with Christ on the cross. And the magnitude of our faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the magnitude of having our faith exclusively in this act, gives us an abundance of so much. It gives us our righteousness. It gives us our victory. It gives us our freedom over the sin nature. It gives us untold things that it's it's just. What words could I use? Um, The benefits of having your faith in Jesus Christ and crucified are unmeasurable. Um, Let's see, uh, verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by the baptism into death. Not only did we die with him, but we were buried with him as well, which means that all the sin and transgression of the past were buried. When they put him in the tomb, they put all of our sins into that tomb as well. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in newness of life. We died with him, we were buried with him, and his resurrection was our resurrection to a newness of life. For if we have been planted together with Christ in the likeness of his death, Paul proclaims the cross as the instrument through which all blessings come. Consequentially, the cross must ever be the object of our faith, which gives the Holy Spirit the latitude to work within our lives. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We can have the likeness of his resurrection, live this resurrection life, only as long as we understand the likeness of his death, which refers to the cross and the means by which all of this is done. I hope that God is giving everyone the revelation and and hiding this 
tremendous word into everyone's heart. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, all that we were before the conversion, that the body of sin might be destroyed, the power of the sin nature made ineffective, that henceforth we should not serve sin, the guilt of sin is removed at conversion because the sin nature no longer rules within our hearts and lives. So these statements right here. So when you are born, you're born with a sin nature. You just have a nature. Your nature is to sin. That is what life is without Jesus Christ. It is just sin. This is what this is what we do without Jesus. When you become saved, you are, you are born again. Spiritually, you have be re- reborn. You're a new, you're new, you're a new person because you're not bound by the sin that you were without Jesus. Without Jesus, think about the things you were doing without Jesus. Think about the way you thought, the things you did. Think about the life you lived. And then when you have Jesus, think about how different that is. So the problem is, is when we take our eyes off Jesus we give power to the sin nature and we sin. That's why it is so critical that we keep our eyes on Jesus. It is it is it is beyond important to do that. Because when our eyes are off Jesus, we resurrect the sin nature in us and we sin. But thank God where sin abounded, great grace did much more abound. But we're not to go on sinning as if it's no big deal. We need to repent, put our eyes on Jesus, and keep them on Jesus. Because that's how we get all the benefits. Verse 7. For he who was dead, he was our substitute. And in the mind of God, we died with him upon believing faith. It's free from sin. Set free from the bondage of the sin nature. So when we're, we're free from sin, but that does not mean we will not sin because we're not perfect. Believe, having our faith in Jesus Christ, the sin nature can be can be put to death. It can be dormant, but yet we won't be perfect. We still will sin. But the difference is, a saved person doesn't doesn't go on sinning twenty four hours a day, three sixty five. Um, we will sin once in a while, but we will repent and we will be forgiven. The world will sin twenty four hours, seven days a week. And we'll have no forgiveness. So that's the differences. Now, if we be dead with Christ, once again, pertains to the cross and in our being baptized into his death, we believe that we shall also live with him, have have resurrection life, which is more abundant life. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more means that his work was a finished work and will require nothing else. Death has no more dominion over him um, because all sin has been atoned in in so much as Christ is our substitute. If death has no more dominion over him, it has no dominion over us. This means that the power of sin nature is broken. All right. So what we see is if we keep our faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified, if we keep our eyes on Jesus If we remain in Jesus and Jesus remain in us, we can have an abundant life. We can have a life filled with righteousness, holiness, full of grace, full of joy, full of victory. But the only way to get these things, to have the freedom over the sin nature, the only way is by having our faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified, the most critical thing in the world. For in that he died, verse 10, he died unto sin, the sin nature, once. Actually means he died unto the sin nature once once and for all. But in that he lives, the resurrection, he lives unto God. Um, Refers to the fact that all life comes from God and that we receive the life by virtue of the cross and and our faith in that finished work. Likewise, reckon account. You also yourselves to be dead it indeed unto this unto sin the sin while the sin nature is not dead we are dead unto the sin nature by virtue of the cross and our faith in that sacrifice 
but only as long as our faith continues in the cross. But alive unto God, um, living the resurrection life through Jesus Christ our Lord refers to what he did on the cross, which is the means of the resurrection life. Verse 12. Let not sin, the sin nature, therefore reign, rule in your mortal body, showing that the sin nature can once again rule in the heart and life of the believer. If the believer doesn't constantly look at, look constantly look to Christ in the cross, the mortal body is neutral, which means it can be used for righteousness or unrighteousness, that you should obey it in the lust therefore thereof. Ungodly lusts are carried out through the mortal body if faith is not maintained in the cross so there we go when my eyes are not on jesus <laughs> i i i have sin i have sin in my life the the sin nature will have dominion but when i have my eyes on jesus the sin nature will have no dominion over me so believe me when i tell you I need my eyes on Jesus. You need your eyes on Jesus. We all need our eyes on Jesus. We need our faith in him and what he did for us. We need to be living in what he did for us. We need to be living that resurrection life, living in what Jesus has done for us. That is where all our benefits are. Verse 13, neither yield your members of your mortal body as instruments of righteousness unto sin, the sin nature, but yield yourselves unto God. We are to yield ourselves to Christ in the cross. That alone guarantees victory over the sin nature. As those who are alive from the dead, we have been raised with Christ in newness of life. And your members as instruments of, right, of righteousness unto God. This can be done only by virtue of the cross and our faith in the finished work. And faith which continues in the finished work from day to day. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. The sin nature will not have dominion over us if we, as a believer, continue to exercise faith in the cross of Christ. Otherwise, the sin nature most definitely will have dominion over the believer. For you are not under the law, which means that if we try to live this life by any type of law, no matter how good that law might be in its own right, we will conclude by the sin nature having dominion over us. But under grace, the grace of God flows to the believer and on a unending basis, only as long as the believer exercises faith in Christ and what he did for us at the cross. Um, grace is merely the goodness of God exercised by and through the Holy Spirit and given to undeserving saints. What then? This presents Paul going back to the first question he asked in this chapter. Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? If we think such a thing, then we were completely misunderstanding grace. The grace of God gives us the liberty to live the holy life, which we do through faith in Christ and the cross, and not license to sin as some think. God forbid. Every true believer hates sin, so the idea of living in it under its dominion is abhorrent to say the least so if you are truly saved there is no way you you can go sin and have no problem with it there is no way you can live a life of sin and be saved and just think nothing of it that it's no 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 that's not that's not that's not possible if you are truly saved by jesus christ when you sin, you know when you sin, you know it's bad, and you know you need to repent. All right, so verse 16, know you not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants are to whom you obey. The believer is either a slave to Christ, for that what the word servant means, or else is a slave to sin which he will be if he doesn't keep his faith in Christ and the cross. There you go. Eyes off Jesus. You could be a slave to sin 
and go to a lake of fire. Eyes on Jesus, you could be a slave for Christ and go to heaven. Whether of sin unto death, once again allows us to state the fact that if the believer attempts to live for God by any method other than faith in the finished work of Christ, the believer will fail no matter how hard otherwise tries or of obedience or of obedience unto the righteousness. The believer is required to obey the word of the Lord. He cannot do that within his own strength, <clears throat> but only by understanding that he receives all things through what Christ did at the cross and his continued faith in the finished work, even as a daily basis, when the Holy Spirit, who alone can make us what we ought to be, can accomplish his work within our lives. Thank you, Jesus. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, slaves in the sin nature, what we were before we were saved. But you have obeyed from the heart that former doctrine, Jesus Christ and him crucified, understanding that all things come to the believer from God by the means of the cross, which was delivered you. The Lord gave this former doctrine to Paul, and he gave it to us in his epistles. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, being made free from the sin nature, it has no more power over the believer, but only as we continue to look to the cross. You become the servants of righteousness. Whereas you were formerly a slave to the sin nature, you are now a slave to righteousness. If faith is maintained in the cross, there is a constant pull of the believer toward righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The manner of men pertains to the fall, which was made, which made the flesh weak. This speaks of our own personal strength and ability. For as you have yielded your members servants of uncleanness, which the believer will do if the object of his faith is anything but the cross, and iniquity unto iniquity, without constant faith in the cross, the believer's situation regarding sin will get worse and worse. Even so, now yield your members, servants, to the righteousness unto holiness, which, as repeatedly stated, can only be done through constant faith in the cross, understanding that it is by and through the cross that we receive all things, and that the Holy Spirit, who alone can, de can develop righteousness and holiness in our lives, works exclusively through the cross. For when you were servants of sin, slaves of sin, you were freed from righteousness, Speaking of our lives before connect, uh, before conversion to Christ. What fruit had you then in those things? Wherefore you are now ashamed. This means that absolutely nothing of any value can come out of sinful experience. It is impossible for, for there to be any good fruit. For the end of those things is death. If the believer refuses to look at the cross, but rather look to something else regarding his sanctification, dominion, I mean domination by sin nature is going to be the result. Spiritual death will be the conclusion. The cross is the only answer for sin. But now, sin coming to but now, since coming to Christ, being made free from sin, set free from the sin, sin nature and become servants, slaves to God. But this yoke is a light yoke. You have your fruit unto holiness, which the Holy Spirit will bring about, providing the cross is ever the object of our faith and the end everlasting life. So the believer has a choice of death, which in, so the believer has a choice of death, which in the end res, result of trusting something other than Christ and the cross. Excuse me, or everlasting life, which is a result of trusting Christ and the cross. For the wages of sin is death. Speaks of spiritual death, which is separate from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As stated, all of this without exception comes to us by the means of what Christ did on the cross, which demands that the cross ever be the object for our faith, thus giving the Holy Spirit the latitude to work within our lives and bring forth his fruit. All right, so 
verse 23 again, for the wages of sin is death. This speaks to the spiritual death, which is separation from God. So, um, oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank, we thank Jesus for his, for, for the word of almighty God. We seek the revelation. We seek the word to be hidden in our hearts and we seek to keep our faith in Jesus Christ and them crucified and our eyes on Jesus so we can have all the benefits that we receive from this. And we thank God for it. Oh, God is so merciful, so full of grace and love. We must we must thank God Almighty daily for his many, many blessings. So the world, the world is spiritually dead. They are spiritually dead, the world is. The manner of sin that goes on in the world, when you look at what people are saying, when you look at what people are doing. um, For example, I came across a video where some devil was saying that in the Bible, Jesus was a racist. And he was a man that was flawed with sin and that he was a man that could be persuaded to change his mind. Now, to say this is blasphemy is an understatement. So the devil, he will have these these devils, his people, try to read the Bible and try to tell you these foolish things. But let me tell you, That is blasphemy. I'll say this once again because I'll keep saying it because it's true. It is impossible to understand the word of God unless God Almighty gives you the revelation. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how how many years of school you went to to try to study the Bible. I don't care how wise you think you are. It is impossible to know this word unless God Almighty gives you the revelation. So when you have these devils reading from the Bible, telling you that Jesus was gay, Jesus was a racist, Jesus was a, a a magician, a witchcraft person, and so on and so on. This is blasphemy against God Almighty. That's what it is. These demons, they are spiritually dead. Spiritually, they are deaf, dumb, blind, unable to learn. That's why when you, if you go on Twitter and you see these people, the things they say, the things they believe, This is the results of sin. Sin is devastating. It is tragic. Sin ruins everything. When you think about anything ruined in this world, it's the results of sin. Sin ruins everything. Sin is like a unquenchable fire that just rages through the earth, burning up everything it comes into contact with. That's what sin does. But Jesus Christ, if we are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, if we keep our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can have joy in our life. We can be of good cheer. We can have the victory. We can live a righteous life. We can live a holy life. We can have freedom over the sin nature. If we keep our faith in Christ Jesus in him crucified, any other way will lead you to a lake made of fire. So thank you for watching the video. I pray in Jesus' name that God will touch you with this word, that he will give you the revelation, he will hide it in your heart, and I tell you what, I need Jesus. I 
need Jesus 24 7 365 days a year you can never have too much Jesus never ever you could never have too much Jesus so we thank God Almighty for his son so God bless you and God willing I'll catch you in the next video